Alrighty, so we are good to go. Let's start making tool paths now. Pretty much with every single part that you create or that you want to make tool paths for, you're going to have to do the same process. You're going to have to think about how do I need to position this so that I can machine it and also consider how you're going to be holding this part, right? So to demonstrate that, let's see, no, I don't have it on this one. Um, for the most part, you'll want it in this type of orientation. And in this case, we're going to be clamping with a standard six inch sized vise, clamping on this material at the bottom. Some parts you might have to use different clamping styles, um, but let's focus on the basics for now. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is doing what's called facing facing is what it sounds like. We're going to cut, trim the face off, right? Because a lot of times you can get rough cut stock or it could be a factory edge, factory extruded face that we want to clean up and get a nice shiny machine surface on it. So I'm actually going to go right click isometric view here, shift, and then click my mouse wheel and I can just slide it, alt click. It's going to rotate from a point, control click. It's going to rotate around like that. So let me go back into ISO. All right. So let's go ahead and go into our tool pass tab. Now I can just scroll through these, or I can click the actual tab I want. All right. So you can either click this face, or from the tool pass manager, you can right click, mill tool paths. You can find your toolpath there. I find the graphics are a little easier unless I'm in a hurry. All right, so I can go ahead and click face. So before we go any further, let me describe what a toolpath really is, okay? Because this is a subtractive method of manufacturing, unlike 3D printing, which is an additive method. We're actually cutting from a, you know, block. So let's pretend like we're sculptors, so we need to sculpt and cut and form this um, in the process we call milling, right? So we need to select the where we're going to cut and the how we're going to cut. So tool paths are defining where and how we're going to cut a particular feature. All right, so when I'm facing this is one of the only tool paths that you don't actually need to choose any sort of geometry, right? Normally I could click the face here. Uh, I don't really want to do that. Facing does not mean select a face, right? You still want to select edges. So in this case, I'm actually going to click nothing. So I'll click right here. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to use our stock definition as our geometry. So it's using this um, dotted line as our geometry here. So that's the where we're going to cut. And now we come into our parameters screen and this defines the how we're going to cut. All right. So most of the basic tool paths are going to have this exact interface. As we progress into more advanced tool paths, we're going to have different interfaces, similar looking, but different sort of features in them. All right. So we've got our facing selected here. I don't have any chain geometry because again, we're using that stock setup, All right? So again, a lot of <clears throat> information going on here, most of which, as I said before, you kind of don't need to worry about. You don't need it unless you actually need it. And most of the time you don't. What we do need to do, first things first, is tool, right? So I don't have a tool here. So what I want to go ahead and do is select library tool. And that is going to pull up all of these tools. As you can see, I've got 446. It's a hell of a lot. I want to filter through those so I can go ahead and filter. All right. So if I single click right now, they're all selected. So I can display all those tools. It's a lot. Right now, if I single click this flat end mill, it's going to take those off. But however, if I double click, it's going to show only flat end mills. All right. So right now I want what's called a face mill. So I'll double click that. And I want a two inch face mill. Right, all of these fields here are about tool numbers right here, feeds and speeds, which <clears throat> we can get into in a later video. I'm not gonna focus on that right now. So don't worry about that. What I like to do 
um, as I've gotten more and more into programming is, first of all, I like capitals because this will output in the code as a comment that's easier to read when it's capped. So I'll go ahead and write face the part. And that way I know exactly what this toolpath is doing. All right, so because I program every day and you know I do a lot of facing operations, I've set up defaults so that they're automatically populated, but a lot of times yours are not. So we want to go ahead and change the style. It doesn't make sense to do one way, right? Come in, pick up the tool, cut, pick up, go back. It's just kind of a waste. So we want to make that zigzag right there. So now it's going to cut in both directions, which is great. Stock to leave, we want to leave zero stock, right? We would only want to leave stock if we were coming in with a different tool to do the finishing operation. So we don't want to worry about that. You can have even number of passes, but it doesn't really matter. Depth cuts define, right, you can see here. So if we were facing off a lot of material, we would, you know, maybe let's say a quarter inch and the face mill can't really do a quarter inch deep of a cut. We want to break that cut into different levels right here. So let's right now 50 thousandths of an inch. Maybe I can do a finish cut if I wanted to, um, but I don't need that right now. All right, so linking parameters. A lot of times students will think depth cuts is where you tell the machine how deep you want that tool to cut. That's actually not correct, right? This is just dividing how big of a cut you have into smaller slivers um, axially along the vertical axis, right? Linking parameters is where you actually tell the machine how deep you want it to go. But because right now all we're doing is just skimming the top off, right? We don't need to set any depth. So we'll go ahead and click OK. That's going to generate our toolpath as you can see right there. So the blue is feed motion right there. And the yellow is rapid motion. So rapid being getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible. So if I was feeling super duper comfortable with this tool path, I could go ahead and slap this on the machine and run it and pray that it's not gonna crash the machine or cause any issues. I don't usually do that though. So what I wanna do there's two ways you can proof out, basically, a toolpath. One of those ways is called backplot, and the other way is called verify. All right, so those two options are going to be right here. So this is backplot, and this is verify. All right, so I usually start with backplot. I'll click backplot. I've got a little pop-up window and sort of a playback screen here. All right. I can step through my playback by clicking S and B. So S and B is going to step through each motion piece. So S and B, or I'll go all the way back and play it. And you can see that toolpath coming in and showing you exactly what it's going to do. All right. Can speed it up here if I want. Slow it down, speed it up, whatever you want. All right, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save the verify option for our next toolpath. All right. So let's go ahead and do our next toolpath, and we're going to do a simple contour. So we're going to cut the outside of this part first, and then we'll progress to that pocket. So let's go ahead and click a contour toolpath. Now, I've got this open pocket here that I kind of want to ignore right now because I'm going to come and do that in a separate toolpath later on. So what I want to do is select a chain that ignores that, which is actually going to be the bottom of this part here. You'll see right at the bottom. That's just basically a rectangular shape. So I can turn this around if I want, select it a little more easily. Um, I want loop on. Now, if I had some wireframe geometry and I wanted to select that as where I want to cut, I would have to click geometry from the wireframe selection mode here 
and then I could choose that. Right now, as you can see, it's not letting me choose any solid edges. So solids here, go ahead and click that edge right there. You can see it's going to chain that whole square, and if I wanted to do some weird stuff, I could click the other face, and you can see that picks that, but we're not worried about that right now. So we want to do that. Click OK. Now one thing that we want to worry about is this silly little green arrow right here, and I'll explain why. So let's go ahead into a top view. Alright, so you can see this arrow going around right here. It's going in a counterclockwise direction. Now, the rule of thumb for CNC machining, and you should follow this at all times, so it's not really a rule of thumb, it is simply a rule, is that you want you're cutting the outside of a part or any sort of contour you want to be going in a clockwise direction okay if you're cutting the inside of a part you want to be going in a counterclockwise direction I did not mean to do that so counterclockwise let's say you do what I just did and you've accidentally selected another chain you don't want go ahead and delete that can unselect it. All right. So in this case, we want that tool. If you look at that yellow circle, you can pretend that that's my tool, and it's cutting around as such. So let's go ahead and use this to reverse the direction. There we go. Do I wish to keep this operation? Why is it telling me that? Let's go ahead and delete that. Yours might not have done that. Let's see go ahead and try that again yes reverse okay there we go so we come into the exact same screen here now you can see some chaining geometry we're gonna go grab a tool in this case we don't want to use a face mill we don't because that's not what they're for typically so we'll go and select a new tool filter here Right now, for some reason, it's got ball end mills, radius tipped end mills. I want a flat, regular end mill. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll use a half inch, three quarter, five ace, whatever one. Let's go, we'll do a five ace. Oops. All right, again, ignoring those speeds and feeds. Cut parameters here. Not really anything to worry about. Depth cuts, we'll go ahead and we'll turn one layer of depth cuts on, right? So we know this part is three quarters of an inch thick. In reality, I could probably take all that at once, but we'll take that and we'll divide, say 0.4 is our maximum depth cut. As a general rule, um, you wanna keep the depth cuts between 50 and 100% of, of the diameter of the tool. So you would never really wanna take a depth cut of greater than um, the diameter of the tool because you might overload the tool. There are some instances where that is applicable and you can do that. And we'll actually show you an example soon. But if you're just taking a regular kind of full traditional kind of a thick width of cut, you wanna make sure not to overload your tool by going over 100% of the diameter of the tool. 0.4 should be plenty fine. Lead in, lead out defines how tool enters into the cut, right? You can see here, this is basically how it's going to do it. So it enters in, it makes its contour, and it comes out like that. You can change these values. As my defaults, I typically leave them at like 60, 60, and here maybe 45 or something, but we'll leave them. Linking parameters here. All right, so what we want to do is, because we're cutting the whole depth of this part, right, we want to find the bottom. So when I'm using depths, I usually use absolute. So we'll go ahead and use absolute and you'll see because we selected that edge down here from the origin to that line is 0.75. So that's the full depth. Now when I'm actually cutting this in real life, I like to go just a little bit deeper just because it's nice to have a little extra that way you don't end up with a really sharp edge when you flip it over and cut it. So we'll go 
negative 0.8. Um, if this didn't auto populate and you didn't know how deep you wanted to go, you can always click this depth button here. That's going to bring in your graphics view and you can actually select points or radii where you want to go. So I want to select there and that's going to bring me again to that value. And I'll go ahead and I'll just do negative 0.8. So we're going 50 thousandths of an inch deeper than the actual part. And I'll click OK. All right. So now you can see we've got our toolpath with quite a large lead in lead out and some would call that excessive. So if you wanted to change that, you could. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, a lot of times you make a toolpath and you realize you need to make a change. Simple way to do that. Single left click right here on the parameters. If you needed to change the geometry, single left click right there. Most of the time in Mastercam it's single clicks. So try to get used to that. Single left click here. Let's say I want to change my lead-ins, and we'll do those values I mentioned earlier, 60, 60, and 45. And I can use this arrow here, and that's going to auto-transfer that. So we'll take a look. Oh, I can't see my toolpath because I made a change. It creates what's called a dirty operation. So to fix that, you'll see the red X here. Fixing that, you'll go ahead and click Regenerate all selected operations, or you can regenerate all operations. I usually use um, selected, so I'll go ahead and do that, and you can see <clears throat> the change that's been made. You'll notice that lead in, lead out is a little more reasonable. So, you can go ahead and backplot that, and just take a look, see what we're working with. Boom, looks good. All right, now let's take it a step further and go ahead and do verify. So right adjacent to the back plot, we've got verify. This is actually going to take all of that data and put it into a new window altogether. I like to maximize this. Now we can actually see what's going to happen to that stock model. All right, perfect. So you can see exactly what it does. I like to go to verify, so I'll scroll over to the verify tab here and turn on color loop. Just click it once. And when we have multiple tool paths, each tool path is going to come in with a different color. And it's a nice way to see exactly what's happening. So we'll take a break for now and we'll come back and we'll do this pocket here. See you soon.